What's up guys and welcome back. So this week was an extremely busy week. Not only did we have to fix some SLS suspension stuff on this guy right here, we had to take off the intake manifold on this and get this thing all buttoned up for our EFI conversion. As you can see, that's getting done right here like this. We had to cut and polish and buff our car we painted not that long ago. If you guys missed that video, definitely go check it out. Let me know what you think of the paint as well as going to a car show with this beautiful beast right here as well as taking out our beautiful Sportline LE. Yes, we went ahead and changed the wheels on this thing if you guys didn't know yet. And yes, it is still probably my favorite daily in the whole world as well as probably one of the sexiest cars on the street in my opinion. But that's not why you guys are here. You guys are here today to check out what we're going to be doing with the EFI stuff on this. As you can tell, it doesn't look the same as last time. Unfortunately, I didn't record removing the intake manifold because, I mean, I was a little uh, preoccupied and had my mind on some other things on why exactly whoever did the engine swap didn't mount the motor mounts to the car, why they cut our frame over here, and instead of welding it, added, yeah, that's right, RTV to it, as well as RTV in what seems to be aluminum foil, but I won't get into that either. I apologize. I'm getting off track a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys uh, how to modify the intake manifold as well as the throttle body and fuel rail. So let's go ahead and dive right into that. All right, guys, so check it out. This right here is pretty much what your setup is going to be looking like when you're done modifying the fuel rail and then obviously our throttle body. I'll show you the little tip and trick we got to do for that so that way you guys know what we're talking about. All right, so if you guys don't remember, our intake manifold was practically black. It was dirty as all can be. Dirt, dust, and grime everywhere. Take it off. You want to take out all your little caps and everything for your injectors, these awesome little guys right here. You don't want to get too much chemicals on that because you don't want them to crack and break. Second thing what you're going to want to do is get a box of brake cleaner. That's what I love to use. It's my favorite thing in the world. Uh, it can clean everything. I spray the heck out of these things man and then what I do is I get my awesome little wire wheel as well as my drill gun and then I just go to town on it I try to clean it the best I possibly can this probably needs one more pass over it but I mean as you guys can tell compared to what it used to look like this is a huge transformation but obviously I wasn't gonna bore you guys with cleaning that because it's extremely time-consuming and extremely repetitive and it's very straightforward. You literally just take a wire wheel, you clean the heck out of it, and then that's all you do. So, from here, obviously, you're going to be taken out. And like I said in the previous video, you will be keeping these for your injectors. These right here are basically injector hats, if I'm not mistaken, is what they're called. They just go right back in there, then your injectors pop right on. The fuel rail that we're using is an M104 fuel rail. And the way we're going to go ahead and mount this bad guy right here is obviously just like that. You're going to set it on there, you're going to cross your fingers and hope that it works. Just kidding, that's not what we do. All right, you are going to be cutting off the end caps, these guys right over here, and this guy right over here. Uh, be very careful when you're doing it, just use a grinder and a flap wheel, but you're going to be cutting that so that way it fits within, obviously, the intake manifold and it doesn't touch your water pump over here or your oil filter over here. You can't reuse these mounts, okay? The only mount you're going to be reusing is this one right here in the middle. And you're going to need one of these guys right here. Fortunate enough, we do have both of ours intact. The one that we do need, unfortunately, is broken, and that's what it looks like right there. You're just going to have to take a pair of vice grips, spin it right off, probably do the same thing with this one, but you're going to take that right out. You're going to take one of these off and put one of these in place of that. I'll go ahead and show you what it's going to be looking like uh, after we're done doing this process. All right, so this right here is a buddy's car. He ended up doing this himself. He did a great job, in my opinion, considering the fact that he's never really done anything ever mechanically. So he did a great job. But as you can see, he cut off the mount on this side, as well as cutting the mount off on that side. And then what you're going to do is with this mount right here, you are literally going to cut the bracket just in one tiny little corner and then, yeah, just bolt it down. That's literally all you do. And as you can see, it's going nowhere. The whole car's moving and the fuel rail is still intact. And then about those little 
spacer bracket thingies. I don't really know the correct terminology for it, but a nice little spacer. That right there is how it goes like that. So very, very self-explanatory, very, very easy, very simplistic. And then that's literally all you're going to do. And then obviously we have our intake manifold, or I apologize, our throttle body spacer. And I'll go ahead and show you that right now. All right, so like I said previously, you're obviously going to be using your stock original throttle body. You can use it. You do have to modify it just a little bit, as well as getting a throttle body spacer. Because without the throttle body spacer, you're not going to be able to fit on the throttle position sensor that you're going to be using. The one from the BMW. Again, if you guys were watching my last video, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But... This needs to be elevated literally just ever so slightly, just like this much, like not, not very much at all. But that's all you're going to have to do, obviously, to make your TPS fit and work properly. So when I say you have to modify your throttle body, you're going to have to get a bandsaw or be extremely skilled with a grinder. What we have to do is shave. We literally have to cut just a tiny, tiny bit off the side right here so that way this little thing right here the linkage i guess or like the little throttle ball thing i don't even know what it's called is basically getting shown out or pushed out so let's go ahead and knock that out really fast Just like that, we cut a piece of sliver right off. So now that little guy is sticking out just like this. That right there is seriously all you have to do to modify the throttle body to make it work with the throttle position sensor from the BMW. Next, what we're going to be cutting is obviously the tabs on the fuel rail. So let's go ahead and knock that out real quick. All right, guys, now that we have our fuel rail cut, I went ahead and put in two injectors as well as bending our bracket right here so that way we can go ahead and test fit, make sure everything is going to fit properly. So, we'll push that guy in, get our nut. Bam! There you have it. So there it is. So now that I went ahead and showed you guys how to modify the throttle body, obviously, getting rid of this little guy right here, cutting and modifying the M104 fuel rail, obviously, like I said, you just need to cut and bend this little guy right here to fit your intake manifold. Obviously, I showed you guys on the other one, we took off the little rubber pieces that were over there, this little guy, put it right under there. And now it's fitting just fine. So, I think that's it, guys. I think that's everything. I think I showed you. Oh, well, you know what? I lied. Obviously, our throttle body spacer. I didn't show you guys how to make that, but all you need is a two and a half inch hole saw, a piece of aluminum, drill your full holes, call it a day. Uh, if you guys can't do that, you don't have the tools, you don't have the means to do anything like this, uh, let me know in the comments, please. I'll be more than happy to send you guys one, I guess. Uh, if you really need, but everything else, you guys can do. Super easy. Anybody can do it. Obviously, just please be careful using some of the tools. And then other than that, I mean, there you go. 
All right, guys, but for the next episode, I'll go ahead and show you guys how to go ahead and install the trigger wheel on the front of the engine, what tools you're gonna need, how you're gonna do it, how you're gonna install the VR sensor, as well as all of the other sensors. I'm gonna show you guys how to mount up the TPS, the coolant temp, the IAT. Obviously, your injectors are very straightforward, um, but I'll go ahead and show you guys how to basically get it ready to go and ready to start putting power to everything, but I appreciate everybody watching. Thank you so much for all the support. Uh, if you liked what you've seen, please hit that like, subscribe, and notification button so that you guys can also see when the next upcoming videos are going to be coming out. Again, every Friday, guys, I'll be posting an EFI video, and then during the week, I'll be posting uh, other videos of what we do throughout the week. Like I said, it, we had an extremely busy week this week of swapping some wheels, fixing buddies' cars, towing another car with another car because he was too cheap to get a tow truck. I mean... We have a whole bunch of stuff for you guys. So again, thank you so much. You guys are awesome. We'll see you in the next one.